Welcome to the Fatty Acid Forum, sponsored by Virtus Nutrition. Join Dr. Tom Jenkins from Clemson University as he answers in layman's terms, what is the cause of milk fat depression? And now, here's Dr. Jenkins. In this topic, I'd like to give a very brief overview of the cause of milk fat depression. But the target audience is not those that have extensive training and backgrounds in mammary biology and physiology, but rather those that have a more practical connection uh, with the problem of milk fat depression, understand its economic importance in preventing it, and uh, just want to know more basic information about what the cause of it is and what we can do in terms of prevention. So this is just uh, an overview that hopefully will provide a springboard uh, to learn more about the science of it uh, so that we can be more effective in battling the problem of milk fat depression. Now the place to start with this is to examine the long-standing view of the cause of milk fat depression and how it has changed in recent years. Uh, it's well known that cows that are fed excessive amounts of grain are prone to have uh, this problem of low milk fat. That's shown in this investigation when cows were switched from a high forage to high grain diet and milk fat dropped from 3.36% down to 2.49%. And um, if you're familiar with this, you understand totally that that uh, can mean the loss of thousands of dollars per week depending on how many cows um, are suffering from the problem and uh, the impact it's having on the bulk tank. Now one of the other observations that always has been seen that when the milk fat drops like it has when cows are switched to high grain diet, uh, there's also a drop in the acetate to propionate ratio which in this case dropped from about 3.1 to 1.7. So connection has always been made between the two. Um, that they're, the cause of milk fat depression must be somehow connected to that drop in the acetate to propionate ratio. Now, since acetate comes from hay fermentation and we're not feeding as much hay there, then it was logical to assume that inadequate hay, there was inadequate acetate, and that was probably the cause of the problem. Now, when you look at how the mammary gland synthesizes fat, half of it comes from the diet, shown here in the orange on the right-hand side. And that's fat being consumed uh, from the diet, coming from forages, grains, and fat supplements that find their way into the bloodstream and are picked up by the mammary gland and assembled directly into the fat. But that only counts for half. 50% of the fat that is made by the mammary gland. The other half, the other 50%, is synthesized by the mammary gland and it uses acetate as the fuel or the carbon source for that synthesis. So once again, inadequate hay, uh, drop in acetate to propionate ratio suggested that there was inadequate acetate to support this side of the milk fat synthesis. However, Studies that were done over multiple locations over a number of years have refuted this idea. Uh, this is a summary of a number of studies that have actually measured the total amount of acetate and propionate produced in the rumen uh, when cows are on a high forage versus a high grain diet. And uh, what is shown here is the total amount produced in moles per day. And you can see across these studies that the amount of acetate is staying relatively constant. Very little change in the acetate production. But on the other hand, propionate greatly increases. So that explains then that the drop in acetate to propionate ratio we see when we switch cows to a high grain diet is not due to inadequate acetate supply to the mammary gland, but rather the drop in the ratio is due to a high amount of propionate production. Now in more recent years, then, there became an alternative look and investigation in what causes milk fat depression. 
and it was found out, and there's good evidence to suggest that it's caused by changes in dietary lipid as that lipid passes through the rumen and is exposed to the microbial population. And the microorganisms in the rumen are using the dietary lipid to synthesize very small amounts of very powerful lipid compounds. Lipid compounds that get into the bloodstream, travel to the mammary gland, and inhibit the synthesis side. Not the direct transfer from the diet, but the synthesis side. Now, these come from the process in the room we call biohydrogenation. And it's a process where microorganisms take the unsaturated fatty acids that we feed the cows. And since we feed plant matter, most of the lipid is unsaturated and polyunsaturated. And they convert it to mainly saturated fatty acids that flow out of the rumen, get into the blood eventually, and go to the mammary gland, and that's where the mammary gland then packages them into milk fat. Now, this is a very important process. It has a vital function. And that's because uh, large amounts of unsaturated fatty acids, or what we call polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, have toxic or antimicrobial properties to the room of microorganisms. If their levels get real high, such as overfeeding distillers grain or other fat sources, uh, it can interfere with microbial function, cellulose digestion can go down. So this process evolved over a period of time to protect the microorganisms uh, from high amounts of unsaturated fatty acids by converting them to saturated fatty acids, which do not have these antimicrobial or toxic properties to them. Now, the process of biohydrogenation does not occur directly in a single step, going from unsaturated directly to saturated. There are several intermediate compounds produced, and the first of these is a group we call CLA. It actually stands for conjugated linoleic acid. We'll, we'll simplify and just refer to them as CLAs for today. And then the uh, microorganisms add hydrogen to the CLA, convert them to trans fatty acids, then add more hydrogen and convert these to saturated fatty acids. So at any point in time, you'll find all four of these flowing out of the rumen and making it to the small intestine and eventually into the blood. Now, most of them are the saturated fatty acids, but they're small amounts of CLA and trans fatty acids. Now, there's more than 20 CLAs that we know are produced by the microorganisms in the rumen, but these are the ones that have been tested in cows to determine their impact on mammary fat synthesis. Okay. And the ones shown in white are CLAs, um, isomers that do not have negative effects on mammary fat synthesis. The ones shown on orange are ones that do have negative effects. And I refer to these commonly as MFIs for milk fat inhibitors. So it's when you feed excessive grain or excessive fat to the cow, it, it signals the rumen microorganisms to overproduce these milk fat inhibitor CLAs that get into the blood, go to the mammary gland, and shut down the synthesis side or reduce it greatly. Now, uh, so there are good CLAs uh, that are normally produced in the process of biohydrogenation that do not cause any problems with milk fat synthesis. They mostly lead to the production of trans-11 fat, but then there are undesirable CLAs that I've been referred to as MFIs, milk fat inhibitors, that can be induced by certain dietary conditions to be overproduced, get in the blood, go to the mammary gland, and cause milk fat depression. So our goal as animal nutritionists is to manage the rumen environment through nutrition to limit the production of these milk fat inhibiting CLA isomers and avoid milk fat depression problems. So just by means of a summary then, CLAs are bioactive lipids that are made by microorganisms in the rumen 
from unsaturated fatty acids that we feed. And once again, whether or not you feed fat supplements doesn't matter. <clears throat> There's enough unsaturated fatty acids in forages and grains to supply the microorganisms fuel or substrate for making these CLAs. Now the CLA MFIs that I referred to are the three CLAs that we know of so far that are produced in the rumen that act as milk fat inhibitors, get into the bloodstream, and reduce, greatly reduce, milk fat synthesis from acetate. So several points to remember. The CLA milk fat inhibitor um, overproduction in the rumen is what leads to milk fat depression. So whenever we have a sudden drop of milk fat that we can document as linked to diet, uh, we can then be assured that we have done something in the rumen through nutrition that has led to the overproduction of the CLA compound. Excessive grain, for instance, causes milk fat depression by overproducing these milk fat inhibitors, but not by inadequate acetate production, as we believe for a long time previous to this theory. The CLA milk fat inhibitors are synthesized when microorganisms in the rumen convert unsaturated fat in the diet to saturated fat, which is part of a normal process, but now nutrition program has caused it to shift from normal CLAs to these milk fat inhibitors. So in the end, and the bottom line is that the rumen production of these milk fat inhibitors can be controlled by diet. And the challenge is upon us then as nutritionists to understand the dietary conditions that causes the overproduction of these MFIs so that we can prevent problems with milk fat depression or at least know what to look for in order to try to reverse the condition and get back to more normal situation. So with that very brief overview, I hope it helps uh, in very simple terms to understand what we know today as the root cause of milk fat depression. More information is coming along all the time through research, um, but um, there's still very, very strong evidence that um, we can link milk fat depression problems to the room production of these CLA milk fat inhibitors. Thank you.